recording. Just let everyone know they're being recorded and transcribed. So I'm just letting you guys know again. And lastly, I want to thank everyone for being here because I know this is a stressful part of the season for all of us that are involved in the assessment cycle. So I plan to make this training quick and simple to give you all some of your time back. All right, let's get started. Here is the agenda for our training today. We will have an overview of MSAA. We're going to go over before testing procedures, during testing procedures, and post admin procedures, followed by an opportunity for you all to ask any questions via the chat and also get anything answered that I was not able to see um, while I was presenting today. This slide, sh this slide shows the assessment windows for each of the Aussie statewide assessments. Paying particular um, attention to the MSAA and DLM assessment window date, which is March 13th to April 28th of this year. Now we're going to move into our overview of MSAA. So any student that was approved for alternate assessments in past years or this year will be eligible to take the MSAA assessment. This test is intended for students in grades 3 through 8 and 11 and also C3, which is a particular track for a certain LEA with the most significant cognitive disabilities. The MSAA is mainly administered through CBT or computer-based testing. Paper-based options are also available. And here is the adaptive design for the test. Um, there are two sessions for each subject area. ELA and mathematics are stage adaptive, rooting a student from form 2A, 2B, or 2C. From the second session, students can complete an entire session or several items in a sitting. This test is designed for a one-to-one -one setting. And the selective responses are for ELA and mathematics. Constructed responses are for mathematics. And student writing prompt is for ELA, which is recommended to be ministered first. And this just kind of goes over what I just said on the previous slide. Here's a sample question that you can find on the MSAA assessment. It'll start off with a basic question. Some questions will have images that accompany them, followed by the answers that you that the student would choose. Okay, next we're going to move into before test administration guidance. So MSAA account setup, you will receive a welcome email which will arrive to your accounts no later, excuse me, which will arrive to your accounts no later than February 27th. Please keep in mind that you will have 24 hours to use the link in that email. Test coordinators will create all other necessary accounts. If a test coordinator does not get an email by the end of day on February 27th, please send me an email as soon as possible so that we can get you set up. Excuse 
you'll gain access to the system using this link. Um, unfortunately, if you do try to access um, the website or like just try to check out the website today, um, it is unavailable. You will find a um, a notice on the page that says any um, it is unavailable. Um, they have some system downtime that they're using to upload and make some certain changes. Um, so it will be it should be available. That link should be um, accessible starting tomorrow. So test administrators have set responsibilities for MSAA testing. This list is an overview. I want to have everyone refer to their um, test administrators manual and user guides for a complete comprehensive list of responsibilities that you are required to do before, during and after testing. as well as test coordinators have set responsibilities for MSAA testing. And this list is an overview. Um, you will refer to your um, test administrators manuals and user guides for a complete and comprehensive list of your responsibilities during this testing cycle. Um, you'll receive it but by the end of the training, Tamara. No problem. <laughs> um, TAs must complete all MSAA test administrative administration training modules. The modules are not now available in the MSAA system. They will be available on the 27th. Um, TAs must complete all, um, must complete the final quiz with at least an 80% accuracy score. Test coordinators must complete all training modules, but do not need to complete the final quiz. Here's an overview of the six different modules that everyone is required to take. So the required uh, materials to download for administration would be the test administration manual, directions for test administration, which is the DTA. You will download those once you gain access to the MSAA system. And also the MSAA online assessment system user guide for test administrators. These three documents can be downloaded from the MSAA system, but I have provided some copies of them on the resource page at the end of our presentation today. Student demographic information. So test administrators must review demographic information for each student and you will contact your test coordinator if any changes need to be made. The student learner characteristics inventory, also known as the LCI. Test administrators must complete all fields so it can be entered accurately into the MSAA system before administering the test. And accommodations before testing. TAs must select all accommodations that are documented in the student's IEP. And you'll select that box um, in red at the top if the student does not need any accommodations. All of this will make much more sense once you are actually able to like go into the system and see everything. I wish that was today, but it will not be open until tomorrow or until you get actually get your um, user logins. During test administration, 
Test security is an important part of administration. So as a reminder, school test security plan drafts are due February 15th. The draft is for entering intended start and end dates for testing. QuickBase will generate a due date for your actual MSAA school test security plan once you have submitted the draft. If you need QuickBase access, please contact Lauren Thompson at dc.gov. Lauren.thompson at dc.gov. And here's just kind of like a flow chart for monitoring and reporting test alert irregularities or incidents. So the test administrator will report any irregularities or incidents to the school test coordinator. Thank you, Lauren, for putting that in the chat. School test coordinators will report any irregularities or incidents to the LEA test coordinator. And the LEA test coordinator reports any irregularities or incidents to Aussie by filling out an incident report. So directions for test administration, also known as the DTA. TA should refer to the DTA and the TAM for all directions regarding test administration. Each DTA is specific to the form of test that is assigned to the student. Read the directions, passages, items, and answer option text exactly as it is written. As a reminder, these are secure materials and should be treated as such. So TAs can only have one student, one student's test open at a time. Please be sure to always pause and save a student's test when taking a break. Accommodations are changes to the standard administration of the assessment that do not alter the construct being measured. Accommodations must be listed in the student's IEP prior to testing. Physical prompting, also known as hand over hand, is not an allowable accommodation for the MSAA test. Test coordinator test status monitoring. TC should use the test status summary tab to monitor the total number of math and ELA tests that are completed. Lastly, we're going to move into after test administration. So for test submission, TAs must submit all tests at the end of the testing sessions. All in-progress tests must be submitted by the deadline of April 28th. That is the close of our testing window. Accommodations for after testing, test administrators, administrators must select the accommodations that were actually used by the student. And you will select check this box if the student does not need did not use any or need any accommodations. The end of test survey, also known as the EOTS, um, TAs must complete one end of test survey for all tested students. The survey provides information about student engagement with the test, test functions for students with unique needs, and state content um, standards. This uh, information is all compiled and given back to the vendor, um, and they compile that and um, kind of give us 
back some information based off of what was um, given on the survey. Correct, it is one survey per student. For secure materials, TAs should return all secure materials, including the DTAs, to the test coordinator. Test coordinators are responsible for securely shredding all MSAA materials. Affidavits. Test coordinators must submit signed affidavit must submit the signed affidavit to the LEA test coordinator within 10 days of completing the MSAA administration. So 10 days from the 28th of April, your affidavit would be due. And you would contact Lauren Thompson if you have any affidavit questions. You could also contact me, but I'm probably going to refer you to contact Lauren. But whichever you need, whichever you feel comfortable doing, go ahead. And we've reached the end of our training session. So this next uh, part of our session is for resources and for you all to ask any questions that I did not answer. I specifically want to show you all the pre-administration checklist that you all cannot. You know, I did not give access to it yet, so I'll change that before this PowerPoint goes out. Um, let me see. Give me one second to see if I can pull it up, though. Stop sharing, stop presenting. I just saying that access is denied. This makes no sense. OK, I'll fix that. But here is the checklist that will help you all out with getting all pre-administrative pre -administrative tasks completed. I will make sure that you all have access to this as it is included in the PowerPoint as well. Share my screen. I'm not sharing it so you can't see what I'm talking about. Here we are. This is the checklist that goes over all pre-administrative tasks um, prior to administration. Just let me stop recording now and I will get to the questions in a moment. Stop recording.